of the Transportation and Licensing Commission. If you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.6.8.030 030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision made by um, may, excuse me, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days, 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Uh, prior to our meeting today, Mr. Fields, I believe, circulated the minutes from our meeting in November. Has there been an opportunity to review those minutes and make a motion? Yes, there's been an opportunity to review them, and I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. We have two public hearings today. Uh, the first is our annual taxi cab hearing. Uh, there were no applications submitted for additional uh, taxi uh, cab permits. Uh, I, and I'm told by um, our legal counsel that we, uh, we still uh, have our annual uh, notice go out, but uh, considering that there were no applications to consider, we don't need to um, have the questions answered that we normally ask of whether permits will be granted or not. So at this point, we'll open the hearing formally and then close it uh, formally and move on. Our next uh, public hearing has to do with uh, low-speed vehicle rulemaking. Mr. Fields? Uh, as you'll recall, the commission established uh, boundaries and non-service streets for low-speed vehicles. Uh, in that rule, it specifies where they can operate and where they can. One of the streets that they uh, were unable to operate on by virtue of speed was James Robertson Parkway. Because the Traffic and Parking Commission has now reduced that speed from 40 to 35, they would technically be eligible to appear to be able to operate on, the, on that street. Uh, the police department contact after the change, actually before the change, the police department and the Traffic and Parking Commission staff both expressed concerns about the low speed vehicles operating on that street and requested uh, that the commission consider a rule that would simply just add James Robertson Parkway to the, to the rule which is already in place that names uh, uh, certain streets as non-service. Now, I think traffic and parking and the police department are here and they would be happy to express to you during the public hearing or before the public hearing, whatever you like, about what uh, what their concerns are. All right. I guess we'll hear from uh, the traffic and parking first. Mr. Knopf. Hello. Chip Knopf, Metro Public Works, Chief Traffic Engineer. I do the traffic and parking commission for Metro. Um, long story short, we had a request to check the speed limit on James Robertson Parkway. We collected data and throughout that data used the 85th percentile speed to determine what the appropriate speed limits are. And we recommended to the Traffic and Parking Commission to lower it to 35. And the initial visit to the commission, they voted to, appeal, uh, to defer because the police department had a, this concern we're listening to today. Um, after talking to Mr. Fields, um, we informed the Traffic and Parking Commission that we would bring the topic before this board. And with that information, the Traffic and Parking Commission voted to reduce the speed. It has not been Im implemented yet. But right now, we have the authority to lower the speed limit on James Robertson from South 5th to Church from 40 to 35 miles per hour, which introduced this whole story Mr. Fields just told you about. So is it the position, is it your position that we should um, prohibit the low-speed vehicles from 
driving on James sure. Robertson Parkway with the even with the lower speed limit. With the with the traffic engineer hat on, I could see the friction they would cause, especially during your rush hours. Um, but even more so, I want to honor the request of the police department who are concerned about the introduction of the low speed vehicles on such a major roadway. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Great. We could hear from uh, Metro Police. I'm Sergeant Derek Smith with uh, MNPD. I work in special events. One of the main concerns with us is we use James Robson as an egress and an ingress for major events. If you let low speed vehicles in that area, then that takes away one lane. So it reduces the traffic volume in order to get out and get into the city. Um, I understand the entertainment value in the bar district for those vehicles, but I don't consider James Robertson the bar district. Hasn't there uh, part of that increase from the buildup in Germantown? Well, from pretty much everywhere <laughs> in the right. downtown area. Right. So um, it, it, it keeps you from, from actually, if there's an accident or if, uh, if there is something that you guys need to divert, of course, that would, that's a lane that you guys are accustomed to using that would be taken up. Yes, sir. All right, well, thank you. It, the, the LSVs would still be able to cross James Robertson Parkway at a regulated intersection, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's there's back and forth. It's just not just on. Just not on. Yeah. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Has there been any uh, formal request to speak uh, submitted? I don't think there've been any formal. But I think there's some folks that may want to speak to it. All right. At this point, uh, having no formal request to speak, are is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this issue? Uh, we didn't request James Robinson. We try to stay off of it anyways. Um, so this isn't something that we, we brought to light. Uh, crossing the street's about the only thing that we do. There's no restaurants or bars or anything that we service on that street. The only part of James Robinson that we even come close to is the, the, park, uh, the park police have asked us to pull into that lane um, that's at the front of the Bicentennial Mall. It's just that pull in part so that way we can drop people off there for them to look at the Bicentennial Mall. Um, is, is that on James Robinson? There's a turning lane. So we are on the Bicentennial Mall uh, area, then you turn into a turning lane and then turn into that. So right now we stay off the road, but that's just where the park rangers have asked us to pull into if we can. Sounds like you'd cross it to get back into the parking Correct. space. Correct. Are we talking about the little roundabout? Uh, no, at, at the end, close, close to the Capitol Hill mm -hmm. uh, on James Robinson, there's a pull-in where all the buses pull in and, and drop all the tourists and everybody off of that area. They just asked us to, if we could pull into that area, so, and that was just up to you all. So. It, it lines up the mall and the Capitol, and you got that's where the, uh, the flag is. And mile marker zero. State flag, yeah. Right. It's right there. The, and, the, and the state map that's in the, the granite with the rivers and so forth. Yeah, with the little fountains and stuff like that. Yeah, fountains. And the, the river six, maps. Six, yeah, fountains that they've got here. Yeah. So if, if we were fine. So you, you're no. not, you weren't requesting to be on it any more than that little, the, the, to be able, the ability to go to that. Exactly. I mean, if y'all were going to approve it. So the other issue is that I believe there's probably going to be about 40 to 50 personal vehicles that look like ours that have been sold um, throughout of Nashville. So you're going to see other people that are on those roads. Yeah. So it's, I'm, it's I mean, other people are going to bring this to light because, I mean, I think they're selling 10 a week because so many people who live in East Nashville and places like this want to be able to use LSVs to get around on their own. Uh, two companies have turned in their permits, so they're no longer in business. It's are just you talking about personally owned correct. low speed vehicles? But they look like ours. So that's the only thing that's going to but they won't Finish. say joyride. No, no, they won't. So you'll see to that. Do what? You'll see to that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's enough. There, there would be enough business for everybody. So you know, they've, people keep coming to us asking for for this, and uh, same thing in other cities. Um, we're just trying to keep it out of. We don't want 
anybody renting carts to intoxicated people and things like that, like Panama City. It's the reason that Panama City loved us so much is because we were taking that away from people who are inebriated. And, that and you're talking about that pullout that's between six and seven? I believe so. I believe okay, so, so you, you actually have to get on James Robertson to use that pullout. Yeah. But it's a, I can see where it's a, it's, it's an attractive place. Um, but you still have to get on James yeah. Robertson to do it. Do you know okay. why the state is asking? Is it to keep you off from pulling over on 6th and 7th? When you say those are state roads? Yeah. yeah, when they say you're asking, in other words, when you're over there, they direct you to that spot yes. if you're veteran. Yes. So the park, please. Have you ever been directed not to be on there by the police department? No. But the rest of James Robinson, we understand. Yeah. We understand. Mr. Nall. Yes, sir. Hello. And my life. Uh, Officer Smith, or Sergeant Smith. The, the question that's here is there's a little turn that, well, you know, the area they're talking about. Would that be an issue? And, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just asking the question. Would that be an issue if they were just to pull in and drop and go back? Or is that an issue that you'd need? Well, my question would be, why wouldn't you just use fifth and go around the loop if you actually want to show them about Centennial Mall? Actually go in there, do the loop, and come out and yeah, problem we'll, solved. Otherwise, if you have them on between sixth and seventh, every time we're catching them, we're, they're going to say, oh, we were just pulling yeah, out of the cutout. I understand. And it's going to affect us from being able to. You're talking about on the back side of that, Correct. where that roundabout right. is. Can you accommodate that? Um, so there's a the photo op. We can't stop in the top part of the Bicentennial Mall either. We can do a photo op real quick, but they want us to keep going. That's just where they asked us to, yeah. to pull over. And that's where all of the restrooms are, are right there. And then, you know, the map of Tennessee. Right. But where he's talking about on the back, Harrison. where the where the where the farmer's market is, there's a roundabout there where they're building the new uh, electric bus pull in. There's a roundabout that's just on the other side of that wall. Yeah, I don't think we can stop at the roundabout. Well, you're saying you're just you're letting them off, right? No, not at that roundabout. I'm, I don't know if we're talking about this. But there's a little parking lot right there as well. Right. You pull in oh, if you're only taking a photo. Right. Pull in there, take the photo, and leave. That is correct. I guess that was just a, a new parking lot. To they it they they added it on to where they're going to be doing the new electric buses, but there there is a parking lot there. It will keep you off James Robertson. It will. Uh, it will keep a safety feature intact for the police department. So okay. you, yeah, that's, fine. Okay. that's just what we were directed to go to. So. Now, this is all, this is really good news, but I, I'm going to say that that property is not managed by public works per right. se for us to be saying you're allowed to go in there at all. So this body might have jurisdiction over it. No, I think most of that state property. So yeah. the state will, you know, you'll be under subject to state rules on just about everything from the, uh, from the, especially the train track back to uh, Jefferson Street, Correct. and from from uh, Jr. from yeah from James Rogers Park all the way back. So Chip is right, but again, you could meet with the, the state park folks, and they can assist you with that. That's fine. Yeah, we just met with them, and that's just, they just requested that we pull at that one spot. So yeah, I have no argument with that. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak to the issue? Hey y'all, Dustin Olson, Nashville Pedicab. Um, so my initial concern is for Titans games. Um, we provide a very useful service to a lot of elderly people, um, handicapped people, temporarily handicapped like knee sprains, ACL tears, et cetera, get from the far Titan lots um, down there where Top Golf is or where the salvage yards are on the other side of Shelby um, to where the cops let us drop off for the um, games. As of now, the Woodland Street Bridge is not accessible to us um, three hours before the game or three hours before any event that they decide that they're going to shut Woodland Bridge, a lot of times for shuttles for the hotels. Um, <clears throat> and so at that point, the cops actually shuttle us to James Robertson Bridge to get over to the other side. Um, if you guys were going to place the ban, I would ask that it would be lifted during Titans games so that we can get over and get back. Um, because if we were disallowed from James Robertson and we had to get over the bridge three hours before game time, well, well, well before there's an, a need or a necessity for us, 
um, and then it's closed uh, a couple hours after game time. Um, we're just over there for an incredibly long length of time just sitting um, to where if we could use James Roberts as we're actually shuttled by the cops right now to go over it, 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 it wouldn't be an issue. It's essentially, it's, it's the only way for us to get over and serve those customers right now is James Robertson. Can you take James Robertson to third? Yes, from third. Okay. And then immediately get back off of it. Yeah. And we actually, we, we, we actually get off of James Robertson before the bridge even ends. If you're looking at your map right now, going towards East Nashville, there's actually a cutoff on the left-hand side that loops back to the bridge, and that's where all those parking lots are. So we're, so we're on the actual road itself there. Like, I don't want to be on that road either. I'd love to be on Woodland, but that's not, that's not capable. Um, so we're on it for the, the least amount of time by nature. Just for, for clarification, I guess there's two issues here. One, we always direct all of our companies that we regulate to follow direction of the police department. So when, when, uh, when they're on the streets and they're in operation of the police department, even if they're directing something that's counter to what we would rule or what your rules might be, they're directed to follow the advice of the police on the street. Right. So when a policeman orders you. Secondly, unless I'm mistaken, I don't, we don't have an operation area or a rule that's related to James Robertson Parkway as it relates to pedicabs and pedal carriages. Now, maybe we should, but we don't. Uh, that, and I'm, I'm looking again to make sure I haven't missed anything, but we've not actually established it, so this would not be an issue for game right. days because, again, they're following the direction of the police department. So I don't think it'll be an issue for you. Okay. Awesome, then. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. At this point, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, we have one more person who would like to speak. I'm sorry. sorry. My name is Michael from Cruz, and we operate low-speed vehicles. Um, from listening to some of the comments, I'll give you my two cents after doing this for about three years now. We have no desire to be on that road in any fashion whatsoever. Uh, the problem with that road that we see, A, number one, is if anybody's currently taking an LSV and pulling into that little cut through to get the photo at the state capitol or pulling onto a 45 mile an hour street, which is currently illegal, um, if you drop it down to 35, we still don't want to do it. For the simple reason I have a hard enough time controlling my drivers now where they're supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be and a driver is going to get on James Robertson and then they think they can scoot a couple more blocks around the corner in one way or another because they don't want to cut through. Now I'm managing a 50-foot section of road, uh, which is, as you guys have experienced, extremely hard for us to do. Problem I also with saying, see with James Robertson is that is not exactly a straight street. If you've gone through there, people are merging, cutting lanes, it's around a curve. Uh, it's a dangerous road in general, much less in, in a low-speed vehicle. So I guess my two cents is, is we have no desire to be on it. We have no desire whether you drop it 20 miles an hour to be on the thing. It's just not a road we need to access for any reason whatsoever. All of the tours that we take, we have routed tours that we take. We've directed all of our drivers to follow an exact route so that people can be dropped off there and take photos. But like you guys said, they're dropping off in parking lots, they're walking over, they're taking photos, they're coming back to the cart, whatever it takes, so that we don't have to go to that pull-in that faces the state capitol that you guys were just talking about on the map. So I guess my two cents is, we have no desire whatsoever to be on that street. Um, and when it comes to Titan stuff, the last thing we want to do is cross the bridge during a Titan game because it takes forever. So we're not interested in that part either. So, All right. So, my Thank you. Yep. At this point, we'll close the public hearing um, so the commission can deliberate on the uh, proposed rule change. Does anyone have any uh, comments to make about uh, whether to... Uh, amend our rule uh, on the low speed vehicle uh, routes and streets that are prohibited. For your assistance, rule number three, it says all low speed vehicles, unless permission is granted by the TLC or TLC staff director in advance, must operate within the following boundaries. And then it lists specifically the boundary and streets, if you'll recall, that work around the city. It goes into the next line, says LSVs must use Division Street 12th to Mumbrin Street Viaduct to cross I-40. LSVs will not be allowed to operate on the following streets, Church, Charlotte, Broadway, West End, 21st, outside of the interloop west of I-40. In addition, state law prohibits LSVs to operate on any public street with speed limits higher than 35 miles an hour. So basically what would happen is you would add uh, a phrase of or any part of James Robertson Parkway. What rule is that, Mr. 
rule number three under the low speed vehicles. Who are they talking? All of James Robertson from the bridge to church or fifth to church? Uh, all of James Robertson all Parkway is what okay. the, <coughs> my request from uh, the police had been. I assume that's still the same. Wow. All of James Robertson Parkway, correct. Okay. anyone like to make a motion I would like to make a motion that we keep uh, all the boundaries that we have intact including all of James Robinson Parkway that all low-speed vehicles be restricted from that area and all boundaries that we have intact so you're proposing to add to the existing rule the phrase or any part of James Robinson Parkway yes I would second that all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, next item on our agenda falls under Wrecker and Towing Services. We have several driver applications uh, to review, Mr. Fields. Justin Brooks. Hmm. Justin C. Brooks. Mr. Brooks had made an application. He had uh, an issue that needed to be resolved prior to uh, uh, he has his existing charge, but he's not present, so, or at least he's not coming up. You would like to make a motion to defer or I'll deny? Move deferral to the February meeting. I'll second it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next we have Justin Burring. Mr. Burring, in making his application, uh, Mr. Burring failed to list a 2016 uh, aggravated assault charge. The, uh, when the record was run, he does have that. That charge uh, was dismissed. <clears throat> Under 3913-102, as Mr. McNally could explain if need be. How'd you fail to uh, list it? Um, well, since it was dismissed, I, I had no clue that any of it was any type of record. I, I just didn't know it was on there. Well, the question did say to list all charges dismissed, expunged, whatever, right? Right. It was so just, you thought we wouldn't catch it? No, sir, it wasn't. It wasn't anything like that. It just really just didn't cross my mind. And I was more, when I was down there filling it out, um, I more or less took it. It was um, traffic violations and things like that. So. Why was it dismissed? Um, uh, well, it was my ex-girlfriend. She never showed up, and it basically was just false accusations. Uh, the DA from Wilson County reached out, tried to get her to show to court, and she just told him she, she didn't want any part of it. So. Motion to approve. Is there a second? I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Nay. We got we got one nay. One nay. All right. Motion still passes. Okay. Thank you. All right. What do you do, guys? Yeah, just come to the office and they'll take care of it. Thank you. Uh, next is Clinton Wayne Ellis. Mr. Ellis? Clinton Ellis. Mr. Ellis. Mr. Fields, does this look appropriate for a motion to defer a month? Okay. I move to defer one month since Mr. Ellis is not here. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next is John Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs. John Hobbs. I don't think we've ever had this many not nope. show up. <laughs> Any reason not to defer it another month? I don't think so. Make another motion to defer a month. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next is Martin Rodriguez. 
Mark Rodriguez. <coughs> in making his application, Mr. Rodriguez uh, uh, listed several charges. In, in reviewing the charges, I just I felt like I wanted to bring it on to the commission for uh, for your for you to review. It was one domestic violence charge, and again, you're very always concerned about those sort of things. So I wanted to make sure that y'all had opportunity. But that was several years ago. Otherwise, I believe he qualifies. So everything was listed in the domestic violence was from 06? Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodriguez, how much time did you serve for the felony conviction? Uh, for one year. One year? Yeah. And were you on probation after after that? Um is a probation the same year when I go to the uh, go to my classes okay. for the one year and the, it's the same probation. After that, no, I'm not. You've listed one felony domestic violence charge from April 2006, right? Uh, April 2006, yeah. All right. And on your application, you only listed one domestic violence charge, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You've actually been charged twice with aggravated assault, haven't you? Yes. I think it's the same case, and I don't put it in the application, but I, I think it's the same case, which is the same problem with my wife, but I don't know. Well... You are Martin Rodriguez, right? Yes, I am. What's your date of birth? November 20, 1961. All right. Do you remember being charged with aggravated assault, domestic bodily injury for an offense on March 10, 2006? Yeah. All right. And uh, is your wife uh, Emilia Sacadillo? Emilia Saucedo. Saucedo, Saucedo OK. And you remember this uh, warrant where it said that the victim stated she's having problems in her marriage but feels she can't leave because she thinks she will be deported. Victim stated there was no physical altercation and no threats of violence from her husband. But then uh, went on to explain that, that the victim that no crime had been committed and you went to court on this case? Yeah. All right. Well, what about this other one? And that was warrant number GS261038. I've got right here. And then there's another one charging on April 2nd with violation of the restraining order. What was that about? Because uh, when I go uh, take my sons with her, her mm -hmm. uh, I'm close to to her when I come get the son again. And... Um, And they, they, uh, the police come get it to the, my work because they say I've, I've, wrote, I've cut the rules, you know. But I don't tell, I don't say nothing to my wife. But my wife have some problem, but brain, at the time. But it's the same case. In the well, there are different charges. Uh, they put the two different charges. Yeah. Yeah. And one is from March of 2006, and the other is April of 2006. Yeah, isn't it maybe two weeks later, maybe? Correct. Yeah. So they're not the same charge. Yeah. 
And why I don't know. The, and they're not the same incident. I know. It's a true difference. Well, you didn't put it down on your application. I put in the second application because I put the other application. When he, when he reapplied, yeah. he, had, he had to put that down. Uh -huh. um, we made, well. So we got everything now? Yeah, we, we have everything okay. we need. And this is one you and I were talking about. Correct. Okay. All right. So are you still with her? Yeah. Okay. Same address and everything. And she lived with me. There's no problem. <laughs> All right. and, the ag and the felony charge was actually reduced to a misdemeanor, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. So when you were asked how much time you did on the felony, it was really, it got reduced to a misdemeanor. Well, how many times? No. Did it get reduced from a felony to a misdemeanor? <coughs> I know exactly what is it. When, when you were charged, the original charge with an assault that was a felony, that was it reduced to a lesser charge as a misdemeanor? Uh huh. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, second there. And it was 11 months, 29 days. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, yeah, right. That's all I had there. Thank you. Would anyone like to make a motion regarding Mr. Rodriguez's application? Over the hmm? No driver's license and playing with firecrackers. Billy, I'm trying to look through these on my screen, but it was the two that we've been discussing and then those other three that he listed. The no driver's license, looks like arrested for gun in April of 84. Mm -hmm. That was it, nothing else showed. Well, given that it's been about 11 years since his charges and the felony was reduced to misdemeanor, I'll make a motion to approve um, the application of Mr. Rodriguez. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. And next we have Jeffrey Sneed. Mr. Fields. In making his application, Mr. Sneed, uh, I believe, is is qualified. He did have, uh, he, he, it's, not as lengthy as some, but it's lengthier than one. I wanted y'all to have an opportunity to see it. But otherwise, he qualifies. There's, there are no, as best we can tell, there are no disqualifying uh, factors to his record. He was actually approved for a permit back in 2016 and had one for a year and did not renew it, is my understanding. Correct? Yes, sir. Um. There were no issues during that year. I'm sorry, no issues that I'm aware of. So he's just basically back before us because he failed to renew. Yeah, I think. Well, he as long as he had as long as he had had followed uh, had, had revealed everything. Yes, he would have. He, sh he should have been able to qualify again, based on the record that we've been able to see. Looks like he had a conviction um, since his original permit being issued mm -hmm. where he was charged initially with possession with intent mm -hmm. felony but it was the disposition looks like it was um, he was convicted of simple possession misdemeanor right and then he has a seatbelt violation mm -hmm. last year or last November What was the, um, what were the factual circumstances surrounding the um, conviction of the simple possession uh, and the original arrest on September 30th, 2016? Um, I was pulled over running a stop sign on the way to work and I had a, a bag of marijuana in the car. And uh, initially they tried to charge me with uh, the felony and it was reduced to a misdemeanor. Are you um, 
currently still smoking marijuana? No, sir. No, sir. It's been well over a year since the whole problem. Did you get off probation okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, completed successfully back in October. And he, had, he was doing random drug screens. And certainly you have the authority to request random drug screens for a period of time as well, if that's what you'd like to do. You got a, anybody you're going to be working for yet, lined yes. up yet? Yes, sir. I work for Martins. Martins, okay. Martins actually operates Mike's Custom Towing, Martins, and mm -hmm. Bailey's. So he's, we, they, he'd be interchangeable among those three if you approve. I'm currently their mechanic right now. <clears throat> so. I was wondering if you would hope we weren't driving yet. No, no, sir. No, I'm <laughs> working on all the vehicles. Towing yet. Okay. And so that's the reason why you let it lapse. You went from towing to being a mechanic, and now you're going back to towing. No, ma'am. Uh, I, I, I applied for my, to renew my permit. It was denied because of the charge, and I had to come in front of y'all to hopefully uh, get my permit back and <coughs> continue working for these guys. I take it there's not a representative here from... Yes, sir. Martin. How you doing, Mr. Martin? Um, so he's he's currently working for you as a mechanic, and you want to put him on as a tow driver? Well, when he initially uh, reapplied for his permit and he got denied, it's right around Christmas time, you know, holidays coming up, uh, didn't want to put him out of work, so we moved him into the garage, helping our mechanic out with oil changes, services, things like that, keep him paycheck, you know, for the holidays and stuff, uh, pending what happened here. Uh, since then, we have spoke. Uh, he is going to take on the mechanic position full time. We do want him to receive his permit in case mm -hmm. there is a night when we need someone, someone called out or, you know, anything like that. He has to go pick up one of the trucks that's broke down, something of that nature. Uh, that way, he still will have his permit. He will be legal if he has to get into a truck. Has he been drug screen? Uh, he has not. The incident happened before he came to work for us. Uh, he was previously employed by another towing company. When he came to work for us, he was under the probation. He was getting drug screened from them. Uh, he's just completed the drug screen. We haven't had any indications that there's a problem coming out of him, so we haven't drug screened him. I mean, uh, you know, we can, if that's something that y'all would like to uh, mandate for him for the future, you know, we're more than willing to do whatever we can to, you know, keep him with us and, you know, keep his permit. Uh, you know, we can send him out for the uh, randoms, you know, and uh, report it back to y'all. That's not an issue. Mr. Martin, this is all general. It's no non-consent. Uh, no, we do perform non-consent and emergency. Uh, okay. But like I said, he would be uh, primary. He's a mechanic, 50 hours a week. Uh, this would just be, you know, just as a uh, basically towing in our trucks when they break down because we do have a fleet of like 15 trucks. Uh, and then if there ever was an emergency type situation, you know, we got slammed with you know, calls and someone was called out or something like that, it would be nice to have his permit to be able to send out on a call if need be. Uh, truth of the matter is he's getting paid uh, a little bit more than your driver, so we wouldn't want him to be driving at that pay rate. You know, we want him to be a mechanic, so it would be a very, you know, uh, uh, emergency type situation to send him out on a call. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. I make a motion to approve. Second. I'd like to add something to that. Okay. Um, would you like to uh, withdraw your motion? Um, yes, I'll withdraw the motion. Um, I actually hap happen to uh, have a transport company myself, and so we utilize record services. And when you're pulling, uh, or towing, it's a very dangerous situation. And yes, being that there is um, there is a charge here for, for <clears throat> marijuana, I randomly drug screen my guys. And since uh, your employer says he has not drug screened you, I would make a motion to approve upon drug screening. Upon, like this randomly scheduled drug yes. screening for how long? Um, for a period of, for just for a period of six months, six one year. months, 
Six months. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Mr. Martin, we'll work with you on that random schedule. Okay. Thanks. Figure out what we're doing. Thank you. Uh, we have one more application uh, for Rucker and Towing Services for <coughs> Matthew Whitman. Mr. Uh, Whitman appeared at the uh, August meeting and was denied because he was not at the meeting. When the commission denies a permit, it has to always come back to the commission for, uh, for review. Otherwise, as far as we know, he qualifies. He did a very lengthy, uh, uh, very, maybe the longest self-report I've ever seen. Uh, his record is nothing with the TBI, but he has listed back to the 90s, just about everything. <laughs> the last thing that he has uh, said that he was involved with appears to be in 2014, and it was a uh, uh, an issue with his license. And he currently has a driver's license and is qualified. He would be working for Tow Pro, one of the emergency companies. Yeah, I'm a certified uh, rec master. Um, I have been towing for like 10 years. I've taken uh, many uh, qualifications as far as uh, tests and, and classes to make sure that I'm, you know, up, up to date on all the procedures and, and highway safety. I make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you much. Appreciate you. it, folks. We also have um, items under on our agenda under other passenger vehicles for hire. The first, we've been asked to review JWT Transportation LLC's application uh, for owner drivers Jessica B. Barron Wade. Mm -hmm. Mr. Field. Ms. Barron Wade. I think she's coming forward. In making your application, she uh, there's one. Uh, one charge failing to be booked was listed uh, and again with at your request anyone who's denied we've uh, we bring them for your review otherwise they're quite the company's qualified she's qualified. Mm -hmm. so what what was not listed she failed to be booked okay. everything else was disclosed I didn't know there was a charge for failure to show up for well, booking. Was this a citation TBI, you got? In it the, was. Here in Davidson County? I've, I'm pretty sure, yeah. It was and Davidson you were told County. a date and a time to be here for booking and you yeah, missed it? exactly. Okay. What was the underlying charge? Um, it was probably, and I, I have an extremely checkered past, and so missing that, it was, it was probably like a traffic violation or something like that, or, and I have three kids, and... It's just something that kind of slipped under the cracks. But as soon as I realized it, fixed it, got it back together. That's the only thing, Mr. Fields? Yes, that was it. Every, the company's in order and her anything, application is as well. Anything in, that was listed that we ought to be concerned about? Nothing recent. Uh, there, I suspect the charges that she would have talked about were well back in uh, the 80s and or 90s and uh, wouldn't have any bearing on an application. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Baron Wade. I did miss the, who made the motion? I made the motion. And second. Oh, okay, the two together, thank you. Next we have some company applications. The first is the Liberty Transportation 2 LLC. Uh, all of the applications, uh, <coughs> Liberty uh, Transportation 2 LLC, Madrid Ventures, and T3 uh, Motoring were all in order and in front of you for review. Anyone would like to make a motion? Motion to approve in bonk. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have a driver application for William Lerwick. Junior. 
In making his application, Mr. Lurie had indicated that there were no charges, that he had, been, that he had no charges. Uh, a review of his record goes back into the 80s. Uh, there was uh, charges uh, from the 80s that appear in, in reviewing them. We suspect he thought they had disappeared as well and were removed from his record. But they are still on the record and he did not disclose them. Again, they were charges from uh, 19, uh, from October in 1985 related to a DUI. That was it from 85, that's it? That's, that's yeah. on the record that we have from the TBI that, uh, um, and that was in, uh, South side of Philadelphia, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I honestly forgot about it uh, when doing the application. And uh, when it came up, I was very surprised. It was 32 years ago, a whole other lifetime ago. I move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion Thank you. passes. Thank you, Mr. Lurk. Uh, we've got some company name changes as well uh, to announce. Uh, <coughs> Adamville Limos would like to be known as Adamville Limos LLC. Daniel's Limousine would like to be changed their name to Music <coughs> City Limo. Uh, Touch of Class Transport Service LLC to Touch of Class Limousine LLC. Uh, the rules require, the ordinance requires any change on the face of the application has to be uh, uh, approved by the commission. Somebody doesn't already have Music City Limo locked up? The name? Well, we don't, not that we have. I'm not sure what the state may or may not have, but not with what we've got. Any reason not to approve? Mm -hmm. I make motion to approve the name changes uh, for all three. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. Um, under other business, there's a change of address for Nashville Pedal Tavern to 1504 Demumbrian Street. It, it does not actually require your approval. Uh, however, uh, the Nashville Pedal Tavern has changed their address and moving from 1514 Demumbrian to 1504 Demumbrian. Uh, and they've actually made the move, but they just have to report to the commission. You don't have to take action, just, just know that it's happened. I do one point of personal privilege, if I may. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe commissioners can only do that. We do have two new commissioners today, and I failed and I neglected to introduce them properly at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, Sarah Lingo and Jessica Powell are both here today. They're new appointees for Mayor Barry, and uh, they uh, have all seven of you here today, and it was easy <laughs> to conduct business. Well, welcome to the commission. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you. Any other business, Mr. I have no other business. I will, I, I, I guess I do have one other. I haven't given you a copy yet. The uh, slow moving vehicle study has been completed. Uh, and I know I've got a copy for uh, you, Mr. McNally, I think, and one for the chair. Uh, well, I've got if, uh, well, I gave you the others as they came in. Uh, the, uh, the, what I think would make some sense, and I'd ask your uh, guidance on this, is for uh, the uh, consulting company to come in in February and make a presentation. Uh, now that I've presented it to, you, to the commission, I will have it placed on our website so the public would have access to it. But again, what I, I assume you would have questions and it'd be appropriate to bring the consultants to explain why they're thinking the things they're thinking. Again, depending on how you accept, how you, uh, how you react to that report, if you have changes that you'd like to make or recommendations either the council or rule changes to the metro, to, the, to your rules, we could have a public hearing in March to consider any of those. All right. Or we could set, we could actually set February up, you could have a presentation and you could have time to uh, consider rule changes at February, but it's, it's a lot of material and certainly lots of information. So you're suggesting we get familiar with it? Maybe have a presentation on it and that we would actually generate some suggestions for rule changes? Well, I think it'd be appropriate, could, you know, the, we now have, initially when, when all of the slow moving, with the exception of the, of the horse and carriages, when they came mm -hmm. before the commission beginning in 2014 and 15, 
um, it was all new. And there was, you know, at that point, we're, as we're studying, we're, we're all sort of working as best we can with the material we have. Now that there has been two or three years' experience with the various parts of the uh, industries, uh, there's, there's some recommendations on routes and zones mm -hmm. and changes that I think you'll see in there that now you would have more experience with by having some time to read it and they see a presentation. At that point, you're probably going to have suggestions that could actually generate ideas at that meeting. Um, clearly, okay. there, there are rules and the, the meetings are yours, so we just want to make sure we're providing what you need. Thanks. And so all of these are up to date numbers, the 115 low low speed vehicles minus about 17 horse carriages. Yeah. Yeah, those, everything is, is, as far as I know, is as accurate as we know them to be. We provided information to the consultants along the way as they asked for it. We were not in, involved in the day to day. We had a couple of presentations along the way they, and they asked more questions. But this was their study and their recommendations, which I think is what makes sense. And we need to hear what the experts have to say about traffic. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Thank you. So with the presentations, February, does that make sense? I think that makes sense and unless other commissioners have stronger feelings. Well, we'll put that at the beginning of the agenda in February. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fields. Thank you. Oh, we got moved to next month. Anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.